Hi, Patrick Cooch back again to talk to you about some more Intel virtualization technologies. Today I'm going to talk to you about Intel Flexible Port Partitioning, which uses SRIOV technology in a new and exciting way. So if you've seen some of my other videos or discussions and white papers, what you see here will probably be pretty familiar. It's the traditional model of how the industry for years has been talking about how to use SRIOV. And that is in the way of hypervisor bypass, where you have these virtual functions that are, of course, lightweight PCIe devices that you can assign directly to a guest OS. And that guest OS, the virtual machine in this case, will load up a virtual function driver and be able to talk directly to the hardware on the virtual function. Another way of looking at that is this animation here that you've uh, probably seen in some of my other videos. And it shows what happens. These Ethernet packets come into the Ethernet port and we sort them based upon MAC address and VLAN tags into different queues. That's our SRIOV uh, virtual functions. There's always queues associated with each one of those. So they get sorted in these queues and then they're DMA directly to the memory space of the guest OS. You don't have to have the hypervisor ever touch those packets. That's the hypervisor bypass we're talking about. So again, this is the traditional model that we've all been talking about for years with SRIOV. The uh, open source community has uh, support for SRIOV today. And here's an example of Red Hat's uh, virtualization guide. And it shows how to enable uh, SRIOV. So what I'm showing here is uh, the Intel A2576, our, our one gigabit controller. It supports SRIOV. If you do an LSPCI and grep on that device before you enable SRIOV, you will see that this is a dual port device and both ports show up in your LSPCI. Now all we need to do is reload the driver with the max VFs option. Our one gigabit controller supports seven virtual functions per port. Our 10 gigabit supports 63 up to 63 and up to 7. So here I'm going to load the driver with uh, 7 virtual functions per port and what we'll end up with is 16 Ethernet controllers that are now available to the the hypervisor to be able to use. So we have those two uh, main ports that we saw in the beginning and then you have these 14 virtual functions. It's 14 because there's two ports and I enabled 7 virtual functions per port. So we have these 14 virtual functions that uh, all the documentation says, uh, you know, uh, you can blacklist those and then you can assign them directly to your virtual machines for that hypervisor pi bypass functionality. So what happens if you don't blacklist those and if you don't um, uh, assign them to a virtual machine, those, those uh, virtual functions, what happens? Well, all these virtual functions will show up in your OS. So these virtual functions will show up as um, as PCIe devices within your open source kernel. This means that they can be as, they can be used as standard Ethernet devices because the virtual function driver is also in the kernel. Intel's been working for years to add support for SRIOV uh, in the kernel, in the open source kernel, and that means also including our drivers in the kernel itself. So we have kernel drivers for the physical function as well as the virtual function. So when you load up uh, the your OS and you and you load the Intel driver and you enable a bunch of virtual functions they'll show up in your system as actual PCIe devices and you can use those as standard ETH devices they will show up in your, your OS as ETH devices and you can sign MAC addresses and VLANs IP addresses everything to those so how could that be useful well let's take the case where you have your more standard looking IO stack where you have your port your physical function that goes into your your Linux IO stack and off of that IO stack you have a whole bunch of processes accessing the network Well, what happens is these virtual functions are available right and as I said they show up in your OS as devices because your virtual function driver loads for each one of those you can assign specific surfaces to any one of those devices that show up because they show up as standard ETH devices in your Linux OS. So you can do this for up to 63 processes per port on a 10 gig card and of course up to 7 per port on a 1 gig card. What does this buy you? Well it buys you an, an immediate quality of service. 
because each one of these virtual functions is serviced with our internal round robin scheduler. This is in hardware. So this means that your backup process, for example, can't use all the pipe. It can't use all the bandwidth and starve all the other processes. I'm going to actually do a demonstration of this right now to give you a better idea of how this works. What you see here is a GUI that I wrote that just graphically displays the amount of Ethernet traffic going to uh, one of the there's six different processes here. So this is a, a, an example of a, what could be going on in a server uh, with a bunch of processes all uh, using a single uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet interface. So we have, in this example, we have some iSCSI traffic, we have backup, we have NFS, we have some management traffic like, I, uh, like SSH and remote desktop. And then we have a couple of virtual machines that are running. So this is a mixed environment here. Um, in this example, we can see that backup here is using over 9 gigabits of the 10 gigabit uh, connection. This is essentially starving all the other processes for Ethernet bandwidth. And um, this could be a, a, a pretty real problem because if you have a process that uses the Ethernet um, connection for something, it could potentially um, monopolize that pipe if it's a high priority process or things are configured incorrectly. And one of the disadvantages of that is that you may not be able to get in with your management traffic. Consider that a lot of new server designs are putting down 10 gigabit Ethernet as the LOM, as the LAN on motherboard, as the connection on the actual server board. Whereas traditionally that's been uh, a 1 gigabit port that a lot of companies use for their uh, management traffic for you know getting in remotely to the system. Now with the transition to 10 gig Ethernet on the motherboard itself, you have this potential problem here where if you have some processes that are misbehaving, uh, something goes wrong, they may actually be using so much bandwidth that you can't actually get in over your management port. So that's a real concern. So how do we solve that? Well, we're going to use what we call the flexible port partitioning. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign each one of these processes to a virtual function. Now watch what happens. See that? Immediately, all these processes have the same bandwidth. Now, I'm not really running iSCSI and backup and NFS in this synthetic test here. What I actually have is six individual instances of NetPerf, all of them trying to send data as fast as possible. So I have six processes all vying for as much bandwidth as they can transmit. But by assigning each one of these processes to a different virtual function, which again show up in your OS, in your in your in Linux OS, as an Ethernet device, we have this immediate and very visible quality of service that appears. That's all I've done is I have I've associated each one of these processes. They're on different subnets for this example uh, to an Ethernet device that is underneath a virtual function. They're all still going over the same exact physical 10 gigabit port that they were just a minute ago, but now instead of all going through one ETH device, they're going through uh, discrete virtual functions. And the reason that we have this immediate quality of service is because within the Intel Ethernet controllers hardware, we service each one of these virtual functions with a round robin scheduler. This means that if they're all vying for as much bandwidth as possible, that they all get serviced equally. It also means that while the management traffic in reality is only going to use a couple hundred K at a time probably when you're doing remote desktop, it means that it will always have the ability to get in. It will always have bandwidth available to it. You can never have that process starred for um, Ethernet bandwidth because even if you enable all 63 ports, or all 63 virtual functions on a port, every one of those virtual functions is going to get a time slice of the ability to transmit and receive. So you will never have a process that is completely starved. You can also make sure that you, likewise, you have a, a assurance that you won't have a process that can monopolize the pipe. Now this doesn't mean that it's not flexible because all this bandwidth is shared. So if uh, management's only using 100K, for example, instead of the 1.6 gigabits that it's using right now, that extra bandwidth is available for all the other processes to use. What you see here today the ability to have this transmit and receive fairness with this quality of service in the hardware is available today.
as of September 2011 is available today in almost all of the open source distros. So that's your Red Hat, your SLES 11, your uh, Ubuntu. All these that support SRV have the ability to do what I'm just showing you today because Intel works with the kernel to add support to the kernel for the, the, the this, this functionality. It's available in all the distros that pick up the latest kernel. Now what I'm going to show you, the next thing, isn't available in any distro today, but it will be soon. What I'm going to show you is the ability to rate limit any one of these virtual functions. I only have six here. This is a 10 gigabit pipe. That means that on this port, we can do 63 virtual functions if you want to. I'm doing six for simplicity's sake. So what happens if you have all this running in the middle of the day? You may not want backup to be using 1.6 gigabits during the middle of the day because that's you know your, your high processing time for your web server or your database or whatever. But you still want backup to run because it's an important process. So let's rate limit backup. Let's rate limit to, say, 150 megabits. What you'll see is backup was now rate limited to under 150 megabits while all the other processes got an immediate jump in their available bandwidth that they're using. This is because it's very flexible. We have a 10 gigabit pipe and it can be shared amongst all these virtual functions. So any virtual function that's not utilizing their full potential bandwidth, that bandwidth is available for the other devices to be able to use. Another example is, let's say this is a multi-tenancy kind of uh, environment where somebody is actually renting resources from me for a virtual machine. And let's say that virtual machine 2 is being rented by a company who's paying me for 300 megabits of throughput. And they're getting almost 2 gigabytes right now. So that's kind of a big discrepancy. So that's resources that I could be using for other virtual machines to, to sell or to use for my database or whatever. So let's rate limit this to 300 megabits. So now you have this SLA with this customer. They can never go over 300 megabits. And you're, you're assured of that. This is done all in hardware. There's no software overhead involved in this. And the configuration for this is all actually done with standard Linux tools. Intel works with the open source community to add support for all this SRIV functionality in the kernel and in the Linux tools. So the ability to do the rate limiting is done with the IP Route 2 tool. I'm going to have a follow-up session uh, at another date to discuss how all this stuff works underneath. For now, just be assured that everything I've shown you here is real and the GUI is just something I wrote and underneath it's just doing an etool-s to get all these statistics. So to summarize, Intel Flexible Port Partitioning is the name we've given to the ability to partition up a, a, an Ethernet connection uh, using SRIOV. This ability is not just limited to a virtualization environment. You can do this in a standard uh, Linux-based OS. So we're using a standards-based uh, technology to do the port partitioning, and that's using the SRIOV uh, specification from the PCI SIG. In this case, since we have enabled all the support in the kernel for SRIOV, these virtual functions will show up in your Linux OS as standard Ethernet devices, which you can assign IP addresses and MAC addresses, um, do bonding with them, assign VLANs. Anything you want to do is you could do with a standard Ethernet device. You can also, of course, assign them to virtual machines. By using flexible port partitioning and assigning virtual functions to specific processes within your your bare metal OS you have a hardware based quality of service because each one of those virtual functions is serviced with our hardware based round robin scheduling this ensures fairness so that you can't have any head of line blocking this is available today in open source distros the ability to do the rate limiting that I showed is available today in the upstream kernel. You can go get that from kernel.org and update your existing uh, installation. We support SRIOV in four Ethernet controllers, two 1 gig controllers, and um, two 10 gig controllers. The takeaway here is SRIOV is not just for virtualization. You can use SRIOV to do flexible port partitioning in your bare metal Linux OS. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I hope you found it useful.
Below are some links where you can get some more information. The bottom one, in, uh, communities.intel.com forward slash community forward slash wired is where I blog about these technologies and post videos as I make them. Thank you.